and welcome everyone to the Strumzy community call of 9 February. And the first point on our agenda are questions and issues. If anyone has anything they want to discuss, we can start with that. We have a, a small question. Um, so we are new to this community call. Uh, my name is Hans and this is Toby and uh, we work in Unity. The uh, quick question we have is that we're running StreamC on uh, GKE. Uh, imagine we're not the only ones. And uh, the GKE auto upgrade is having some issues. Um, it's saying that the parts, the StreamC parts are blocking uh, scale down because it's not backed by a controller. But in uh, some recent StreamC releases, I believe this was supposed to be fixed. Um, so I just wondered, like, what are your experiences? Are any of you running at this on GKE? Um, just to kind of get a gauge a little bit there, if it's a, a just a thing that we are happening to us all about. We're running on StreamC 0.32. Nobody is running this on GKE. I think there are definitely users running it on GKE. I'm not sure anyone on this call right now is running it on GKE, to be honest. I'm trying to search. I know I edit the, the controller reference. In which version did I edit this one? So I hope you should see it on the screen I'm sharing. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. That, so that's this. It. This was what I did in Streams 032. And, and that is the version we're running. Uh, I was just, I was really hoping someone would just immediately say, oh, you know, this is, uh, it's just us, so it's, it is working or whatever. Um, I, I don't know, most of our clusters, they were provisioned with the earlier version and then we upgraded StreamC and I don't know if we actually need to recreate the, the kind uh, Kafka for this to, to take effect. So if you, if you just dump the, if you just get with kubectl the YAML of the pod, you should be able to see the own reference there in the own references. Yeah. The uh, there, it's not truly really clear from the message here. Like the message here is actually not from GKE, that's from AWS, according to the host names. Uh, if it's not there, a known issue, I can gather some data and create a new issue on it. Uh, or I just wanted to 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 see if it, this was something that would there was any awareness about I think there was some other thing which we cannot really solve in Strumzy. But maybe there's not issue for that. Maybe that was a discussion on Slack. Uh, so we have this drain cleaner utility yes. for for kind of helping to drain the nodes. Uh, but I think one of the issues was that I think GKE was not in some situation sending the eviction request. Yeah, when it yeah. decided that it doesn't send, doesn't want to do it. So it actually ignored the drain cleaner because the drain cleaner was based on uh, capturing the eviction request. So I think that was GKE as well. 
but that might have been only on some Slack discussion. And I'm not sure there's any easy way how to work around it, to be honest, on that one. Yeah, no, that, that's a great call out. Um, and that was our experience as well. We tried to use a drain cleaner to, to get it to drain, uh, probably doing upgrades, et cetera. Um, experience the same thing as you. Uh, there was, I think there was an issue on that as well, or maybe it was a comment on some issue. Uh, the theory was in the GitHub issues that if you set the part disruption budgets to zero, uh, GK would not even trigger the, the drain. Um, yeah. So the, the drain cleaner had no options to, to actually get it to drain properly. But I believe it's somehow a little bit related. Yeah, so that's probably true. Um, we went back to having part disruption budgets of one. And then with this Strimc 0.32, with this controller thing, it does appear that, um, for instance, when you do a blue-green rollout of nodes, then it actually does uh, properly close and drain the nodes that don't just time out. Um, but it doesn't; it still doesn't upgrade the clusters, um, which is kind of it's a little bit weird. Uh, I don't know what, but I, I I'm not knowledgeable enough about the whole controller situation. If you Get a part. It says that it's controlled by the Strimsy part set. The Strimsy part set believes it's controlled by the uh, operator, I believe. But it, then it also has a controller flag that says. Let me just see what it says. Oh, sorry, I don't say anything wrong. Um, Yeah, so it has owner references, then it says that it's owned by the StreamC, uh, kind StreamC, but then it says controller false, and I don't know if that's how it's supposed to be. But I can uh, I can create an issue if you're if you're interested in looking into it. You mean on the on the port disruption budget that it says controller false or no the StreamC part set. If you describe the StreamC part set. Oh yeah. yeah. I so to be honest, it's a bit confusing. Uh, I don't think Kubernetes should care about the controller flag on the own reference in the streams pod sets. Okay. But there's also when you, for example, read the docs about the uh, pod disruption budgets, then uh, it actually still like the, the PR which we did for Streams 032, that changed the controller flag in the owner reference. But Kubernetes has still some level of understanding that it's not managed by a standard Kubernetes controller, like the stateful set controller or the deployment controller. And it still behaves sometimes differently. And for example, for the pod disruption budget, if you are not managing it by the like by the stateful set controller, for example, then uh, you cannot set the min available field, but you have to set the max unavailable field and uh, and things like that. So, so there are like different controller concepts and like we can set the flag in the owner reference, but we cannot necessarily set like tell Kubernetes to behave differently in the pod disruption budget, for example. Yeah. Um, I yeah. I also would like to maybe deep dive at some point to figure out exactly what's what's going on with this. The, this this PR it's supposed to be setting the controller flag in the owner reference of the Strimsy part set. Is that correct? Yeah, that's correct. So when I have Strimsy part not, sets not in the in the streams of pods, not in the streams of pods set. Okay. But on the parts then, or on on the on the pods directly, yes. Okay. 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 So that that was why, but yeah. then it matches what I'm seeing, I believe. So if it would, 
in any way help to set it on the streams of pod set as well? That shouldn't be big change to do. Well, I, I, don't probably... see, I don't see why Kubernetes would care about that, but but if you want, we can do some test build and you can give it a try or something like that. Yeah, I don't know if if it makes sense at all if Kubernetes should care about that. I, I'm still not understanding why it why it's believes that these parts don't have a controller. Um, it, it's a little bit odd. Um, I can do some more experiences in mine as well and, and then come back to you. I don't want to take all your time, but thank you. Okay, sounds like a plan. Thanks. Okay, anything else anyone wants to discuss in the questions and issues? If not, I guess we can move to the open PRs and issues. So I added some issues which seem to be not moving forward or PRs. Paolo, is there any update on this one? No, I guess we are waiting for the user from the community because uh, we left some comments. Uh, he fixed one of them. Uh, I propose to yet yeah, to make the code um, cleaner. Uh, and then um, we also need a test. But I guess it's uh, one week that uh, the user yeah, hasn't came to us again. Okay, so, that's, not, that's not that long, so I guess we can just wait. Yeah, we are just wait. Okay, what about the next one? On the bridge pipeline. Oh, you are involved in that one as well. Yes, because uh, yeah, you know, when sometimes I I, I I build a new uh, bridge release and I want to test something in our uh, system tests, uh, and we know we we have the system tests in the operator repo. Uh, what you have to do is running the entire regression pipeline. So I was talking offline with Marosh if uh, it was possible to. Um, to yeah, to run just some tests, uh, just the ones for the bridge, because I see that there is a tag uh, on these system tests. Uh, when I say run, of course, it's uh, about uh, relying on the Azure pipeline. So we opened this uh, PR about adding a new pipeline so that we can run just the system test for the bridge instead of the entire regression, which is really long, uh, uh, almost five hours or sometimes more. Uh, so yeah, that was my idea, just to have something that I could run the, the, the use the Azure pipeline to run the just the system test for the bridge quickly. But yeah, you raised the point that this is another pipeline to maintain and to have updated and things like that. Yeah, that's one thing. The second thing is that the way it's done there you actually still have to go and open the PR and everything. So you can't just kind of run the pipeline and say, run it with bridge version 0 0.25, for example. So you would still need to go open the pipeline. And then the first thing I would wonder about is whether it actually saves you any time because if you run just all the bridge tests but single pipeline then that will probably take several hours as well so regarding the the first point that you mentioned about the pr uh yeah good point yeah i i don't mind to open another pr it was just 
you know, waiting for five hours. And regarding the second one, Maros said me that it should be fa faster, kind of even 30 minutes or, or more, or kind of less than one hour, but not up to five hours for regression. I doubt it will be less than one hour. Well, if you think that it doesn't save time, then yeah. Uh, you would need to it's you would need to try it, but but there are the tests like the tracing tests and so on, which I think will take quite a long time because they actually don't run just the bridge; they run everything anyway. Yes, your maker and so on. And there's more tests like that, so. So I don't know. There is Marosh on the call, or uh, no? I don't see him. If you want to raise this point on the issue, and uh, yeah, we can continue to discuss there. I think I raised it there. Uh, the question is more: How do you want to proceed? So, to be honest, you replied there that yeah, you want it. If you want it, you should just do it then. So, the well, question, I. The question is more: What is it waiting for for two weeks now? Well, actually, uh, I would uh, wait for uh, Marosh jumping on our comments. So what he thinks about your um, points that you raised? And yeah, because if it's uh, not able to save time, then uh, yeah, we can just close it. Well, I don't know that you would probably need to run it to know it for sure. Yeah. How long it actually takes. But in any way, somebody would need to go and try it or something, right? If it's just sitting there for another two weeks, nothing really changed with that. Okay. Okay, what about this one? And Marsh isn't here when there are like three or four PRs of his. So I guess let's ping him, ping him if it should be merged. Yeah, so this one from Shubham. I guess it's waiting for my review. Yeah, looks like it. Yeah, I will take a look. And then the next one is this one, Paolo. Yeah, I guess that we can merge this, right? So we agreed to have this uh, uh, craft-related uh, matrix, so the related pattern for Gemix exporter to be commented out for now. But uh, yeah, useful to be there if someone is playing with the craft and they want to see some metrics in Prometheus. Okay, anyone has any other PRs or issues to discuss? Anyone has any proposals to discuss? I don't think there's much new about proposals.
Okay, then the next point is issue triage. Sorry, Jakub, uh, regarding proposal, maybe uh, there is the, the Canary Roadmap proposal, the number, the, the number 58, which is looking for uh, other people to, to have a pass, maybe. Because I know that, uh, yeah, Lukas is anyway working on a kind of uh, POC for that. There seems to be a lot of open comments. Yes, and maybe for that uh, we should ping Lukas as well. Like this? Yes, thanks. Any other proposal anyone wants to raise? Okay, then I guess the issue triage. So this was an issue I actually opened, but it came out of some discussion <clears throat> about how we generate the CRDs for uh, how we generate some structure in our CRDs where we currently use structure like this. And the suggestion was to use structure like this. And the reason was that some tools for whatever reason, which I don't think is necessarily our issue, but like Terraform seems to be struggling with our definition. And it seems to behave really weirdly, as in delete the resource when I, instead of updating it, which I think it's their issue, but the point is that this seems to be used for the metadata fields by Kubernetes. So while this definition is not strictly speaking against the specification, it's not necessarily wrong to use the same schema as, as Kubernetes do, but yeah, in any case, that's why it's for triage, what others think about it. So, as I recall, we added the X Kubernetes preserve unknown fields when we made the changes for structural schemas. Um, based on the documentation, and that's a, a link to the relevant section. Um, so as far as I was aware, that was the sort of the right way to do it. I'm happy to be wrong about that, but I'd like something a little bit more authoritative than um, some other thing. Um, barfing on that yeah so i don't think what we do is invalid and i think there are situations where the preserve unknown fields is the only way how you can do it it seems to me like when all you have is a string string map then you can actually do it this way. So it's not necessarily something what you can, for example, do in the places where we actually intentionally use string object map. 
and have a deeper structure. Right. Okay. But so I didn't found anything where this will be against the specification what we do. The fact that this structure seems to be used for the actual object meta schema in Kubernetes seems to be kind of convincing that that might be valid as well. But I, I don't know, to be honest, it's, it's always degree of risk when you start changing something like that. Yeah, I mean, so long as it's a compatible change, which I believe it would be um, for those cases where we've got a map of string to string. And so long as Kube still considers it a structure or schema, then I, you know, personally, I can't see a reason um, not to do that. But yeah, you're right. There could still be a risk because, you know, for all we know, it'll mess up something else. And these are, you know, there's so many things which operate on resources in Kubernetes that, it, you know, you only find out after you've done a release and you know, you've broken it for somebody else. So. Yeah, that was, to be honest, the first thing which I said there in the discussion that we like cannot really fix it for Terraform and break it for something else. The If Kubernetes is using the same structure as they're suggested, that seems a bit convincing that most tools should be able to handle it if they are able to handle metadata themselves. So as far as understood, it's going to work if we have a map string string. Are we sure that we don't have something different and we are going to break? We have different things. That's why it needs to be used only where the intention is to have map string string. Hmm. So the, the generator needs to be updated accordingly. So if so, if it's going to be used just in some places in order to not break what we have, it means that in the other places we will still have the X Kubernetes preserve unknown fields, and it's not going to work for for the guy asking that. So it will have some CRDs working and other not, just to be to understand better. <laughs> I. <laughs> Not sure I want to necessarily see this fixing it for some tool because you can't fix things for yeah. various tools and you don't know what they do next and what they change in the next version and so on. So my view is more that there is a difference between specifically accommodating some tool and I was not convinced that just because a single tool needs something that's the reason to change the convincing thing for me is that if that's used by the kubernetes schema then maybe that should be generally understood enough and should maybe not break anything else yeah
So like this, does it make sense? Yeah, that's a good summary. Yes. So do we want to give it some help wanted label or something? I would say yes. Yeah, I don't think it's uh, on our high priority list. Yeah, I'd agree. But I guess it's not really good start if you are. No. Okay. And close the original window. So the next idea, which came out of another discussion, was that we have some labels and annotations. Like one obvious is the streamzio slash cluster label, which is used on the users and topics and connectors. But there are also the annotations, which we have like for the manual rolling updates and uh, and things like that or approving the annotations and there was a user in the discussion who suggested that it would be easier if you use the api module if these are defined in the api module and not as they are currently inside the operator common or in the cluster operator modules where the user actually doesn't have them. So if the user needs to use these labels for some automation, they have to basically create their own constants and so on. So the idea was to kind of move that somewhere into the API module to have them there. Yeah, I don't see why it should hurt, I mean. Uh, if they are using automation, it will be great instead of having, uh, you know, hard coding things on their side, having us exposing what are the labels that you can apply. Yeah, I'd agree. It's also an opportunity to sort of uh, document a little bit more clearly sort of what each of them are intended for. So I guess the question is, where exactly or how exactly would we move them into the API module? Like, should there be some separate class which holds all of them as a constant or should there be should these be as a constants on the classes using them somehow or? I wonder if we should have a class for each, because some of our labels apply to pods, don't they? Which aren't, you know, sort of something that's directly part of our API. So I wonder if we should like have a class for, I don't know, pod labels and Kafka labels and so on, and that way it makes it much clearer which resources they pertain to. That will be quite a lot of classes, I guess. Yeah, potentially. I'm not sure we have any public pod labels, but we have like secret stateful sets or deployments or streams of pod sets. And if we are if you're going to have just one class, maybe we should just naming them in a good way, since that we should have a kind of prefix, making clear where this label can be applied. Uh, I mean, in order to avoid to have all a huge number of classes, maybe with a few labels, or maybe a class with just one label, one constant inside, depending on where the label can be applied.
Yeah, I guess. So, have bond class and have the constants inside. Describe what they are used for. Would there be yeah. one class for both labels and annotations? No, I think you want no, to yeah. separate them. Otherwise, I think it's far too likely that people will use a, an annotation as a label or vice versa. Yeah, I agree. So like this, anything else to add? Yes. Okay. And I guess this sounds like a good start issue. Or? Yeah. Yeah. Should not be that tart. Okay, and I will ping this user who was already asking about it. So maybe one more thing. What would be the package where we want it to live? Just directly here in the API Kafka. Yep. Yeah, I suppose. Okay. Next issue was from Paul also. Over to you. Yeah, the thing was that uh, uh, there was a user having a problem with uh, with uh, running a rebalancing uh, because of the Rackaware goal. So um, if you have a problem with uh, one of the hard goals, right, uh, like the Rackaware goal, and you are running your uh, um, cruise control 
specified in the Kafka custom uh, resource without any configuration, so just empty. You're just deploying cruise control. It means that it's running with the default configuration in terms of hard goal and default goal and things like that. Um, then uh, if you, for example, want to change the hard goals, so you want to get what is the current default list that StreamZ has configured on cruise control, because I want to get that list. I want to remove one of the goal and define my hard goal list so that I can set into the cruise control uh, definition in the Kafka custom resource. The way that I, 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 I found was just, so you, you have to access the deployment of cruise control. There is an environment variable where you can see uh, the, this kind of settings that then the operator will write into the cruise control properties file uh, on the pod. But I also noticed that um, the cruise control properties file is not completely the same as the content of the environment variable. So there are more configurations. So I was looking for a way to have uh, the whole cruise control properties file, so the whole cruise control configuration to be easy to be accessible by the user in order to get this list. And so that, well, for this specific case, of course, and getting the list, changing the list, and so on. And uh, instead of accessing, well, the deployment will be simple, but uh, if you want to see the full configuration, you have to access the pod. You have to go to the uh, cruise control properties file, which is not so great for me. So I, I was wondering if it's so if it could be useful having something like we have with the, the Kafka configuration, right, where we have a config map, uh, and then we 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 can use that the the the, the same way as for Kafka for cruise control to have the config map where you can see, okay, this is the configuration that we are going to apply to cruise control. Yeah, just, just wondering if uh, it would be a better way to have this configuration to be easy to be accessed by the user if they want to check or get how cruise control is configured somehow. So this is really because users want to be able to find out what the default settings slash goals are so that they can then remove the ones which don't apply to them. For example, rack awareness. Yeah, right? yeah, something like so at least that was the, the use case that we faced. Uh, because you, do, you don't know. So you actually just specify cruise control with the empathy configuration and you know it's going so the operator is going to apply the default one and you don't have a way to get what's the default one you can have i don't know something in a status but that will be so a bigger chunk of information in the in the status and I, to, to be honest i don't think that the kafka cr status is the right place to put this information no i agree yeah so having something like the kafka config map maybe could be useful yeah, I also think this will be useful because I worked with another user when there was a bug in the CPU goal and we had to remove just that goal. And I it took some time to figure out uh, all, the, the whole list of uh, goals. Yeah, definitely will be useful. Would it not be better to provide a a way of configuring a list of goals to be removed from the configuration? Could we make that work? I don't know. I'm, so in general, I'm not a huge fan of uh, negative logic. So I am more, uh, let me know how, how things are working now and then I can get from there and removing what I need. So to be clear, so I, 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 so at least that's my point of view, just to, I can look at the Kafka custom resource. I can look at the cruise control section and I see hard goals because we can specify the hard goals there. So I can just see the hard goals that are being used by cruise control instead of having, I don't know, some removed hard goals list. 
which anyway, maybe I, I would like to know anyway, but what are the others? So I am reviewing this, but what are the others? And it's, uh, the, so it's still the same problems that I don't see what are the others. I'm just removing something. So at least this is my, 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 my view. I would prefer to have in the list there. OK. Well, I mean, it doesn't seem entirely unreasonable, but it does seem a little bit of a, an edge case on the whole. But yeah, I guess we should do it. I think I don't have a problem with doing the configuration through config map. I think that's fairly easy. It seems a bit weird user experience to me to say this is where you look the configuration. But it also seems like the issue was the issue happened in the initial design, right? The rec awareness is not enabled by default, but the rec aware cruise control goal is enabled by default. That seems like a mistake, but I guess it cannot be fixed now because that would break it possibly for someone who is using it and is relying on well i mean i was going to suggest that possibly if we know that we're running on a cluster that doesn't have rack awareness we should not configure the rack aware goal that would be silly I think that would make sense, but I'm a bit afraid about the linkage which it makes between the cruise control configuration and the Kafka configuration. As it kind of, in the code, it creates kind of a weird dependency, which I'm not sure I'm that eager about. Yeah, even because the other thing is, uh, you you don't have the rack awareness on Kafka, then uh, your cruise control section is empty in the Kafka cluster resource, and then uh, the operator decides to yeah to remove the uh, the rack hour uh, goal. But so it's still the same problem. You don't know where to see that this rack hour goal was removed. So you know because in the documentation we say if you don't configure the rack on Kafka, it will not configure the rack hour goal in, in, in Grease Control, but you don't have evidence that this so that it's happened somewhere. So this is for for this reason, as we can ask people to see, okay, in the let's see how your Kafka cluster is configured. You can point think, people I to the config map, right? I don't think it's necessarily one or the other Paolo. So I don't think that necessarily prevents it from using the config map, but the question is if it would be a better way how to handle this. <clears throat> yeah, and that's also I... just just checking that the rec awareness is enabled is also not doesn't solve everything because the rec aware goal also needs to have multiple zones and so on so the rec aware goal i think doesn't work for example if you have rec awareness enabled but are running only in one zone anyway mm -hmm. which like i do it all the time in my home cluster just to kind of test the, have the rec awareness running uh, but the rec aware goal doesn't work with that either Okay, so this issue should be implemented, but maybe we should think a bit more about what to do about the recover goal. Do you think if we want to correlate to the rack awareness in Kafka? Yeah. Yeah, we can think about that. Yeah, please add the comment here so that uh, even Kyle, who, who was interested in this, can take a look.
Okay, like this. Yep. So what would be the labels on this? Uh, well, I don't think Alpo wanted, I don't think that it's so trivial. Okay. So at least it's not so trivial for people who don't know about the code base and the whole quick cruise control configuration work. So that's fine as an enhancement. Yeah. Okay. Then the next issue is, uh, so I opened this one. It looks like in the Kafka connect API implementation. We have quite a different logging between different requests. Like we have some get requests, which log every request and uh, result on the debug level. But then we have other requests, which don't log anything on any level. And I guess sometimes it makes the debugging a bit harder if they don't log anything, like in the discussion, which I linked here. But it also seems as an inconsistency because there doesn't really seem to be any reason why the logging is different in each case. So I was wondering if we should add the logs to the other calls as well to have it the same for all the components. Yeah. <clears throat> I, I don't know that part of the code, but I, I, I would agree in sense that in my experience for the bridge, for example, so with the REST API calls, at least at the info level, I am, we are always logging, uh, you know, the kind of operation that you are executing, the HTTP method, the, the endpoint that you are hitting, uh, and then the, the status code that you get. So at least these three information at info level, and then you can get more information at the bug level. So I think here it would be absolutely too much on the info level and anyway the existing are on debug level well at least tracing what is the endpoints that you are hitting and what's the outcome right which is anyway what you are suggesting i see on the on yeah the but, issue. but i don't think the user cares about it on the info level in this case like that's not the main functionality here and uh, do you already get what are the calls that you are making? Well, or maybe so I, 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 said, for, I got for, this issue for wrong. Some of them you, for some of them, you have the logging. For some of them, you don't have any logging at all. And what is any, actually logging? In any case, the logging is done on a debug level. And what kind of information are you getting where you get the log? Well, it's logging what's sending to what endpoint and what was the response from that query okay which is the minimum stuff that you should get right but it's not on all the endpoints as far as I understood yeah it's yeah okay only on one get okay so i i guess that uh, this kind of level of logging should be on all of the requests which is the minimum right which is the same of the bridge what, what, what you are calling and what is the outcome. Tom, do you have any thoughts on that? I think you wrote originally this code. Um, I agree, we should have, um, yeah, consistent logging and debug level sounds fine. So would this be a good start issue? I guess it would, right? Yeah. So just one question, uh, Jakub. Uh, so if you are not setting the bug level, but you are at info level, you don't get any from the log. Is that right? Or there so is something? Uh, I So your comment is that um, the the we should add all the logs for all the calls at debug level. So it means that the current logging 
where it happens is at debug level. It means that if the level is info, you are not getting any information. So it's so you do, you don't see any communication. Okay. But I don't think. It's... Yeah, it's important. Like we, don't, to... we don't do it for any other. Yeah. Any okay. Okay. Like yeah. Yeah. It should be the same for cruise control API. Yes. Okay. I Do you guess. want to keep uh, good start bugs for the community? Or because this sounds like something I could be able to pick up this one. Sorry, what? Do we want to keep good start issues like this one open for the community for anybody else to pick up? Or, or are we happy to pick them up? Yeah, also? I ideally, I guess we want that for the community. Okay, no worries. But I mean, you are a community as well if you want to pick it up. <laughs> Well, I, I leave it open for a week if somebody wants to grab it or doesn't grab it. Yeah, okay. Thanks. Okay, I we are running out of time. I think the last issue, Kyle is still looking into it. So I think we can maybe leave it for next time. Yes. And that brings us to the end of the agenda. So does anyone have any other business in the minus one minute we have left. If not, then that's it today. So, so thanks a lot for joining and see you next time in two weeks or around on the Slack channel and so on. Yep. Thank you very much, everyone. Thank Bye. You for thanks very much. Thanks. Thanks. Thanks.